Hi everyone, welcome to Simon 2. Welcome to another episode of Simon 2's. Today we have the Pulsar Q. Nissan Pulsar 1998 with the uh, SR20 engine. SR20 DE 98. And uh, what we do today is uh, we're going to pull the bottom end out. In the last video, we've been finished strip all the wires. Now we're going to do the bottom end. We keep the whole engine and the cradles and uh, we got to keep the steam racks, steam wheels go all over to the new car My brother always give me hard time He tell me how to learn how to cut a leak converter This is not like American man, why do I want to steal it? But anyway, this is take out the cannon and we keep the cannon first before we put the car down or maybe we have to take the wheels and keep the wheels so this is the same way how I steal the cat converter, okay? So don't laugh on me and uh, really don't want you to learn this one. Don't want to see how you steal it. So uh, just the receiver saw, Milwaukee, Makita, whatever, you can cut it out, okay? Co cut and keep the cannons. He happy. Nissan Pulsar QN15. This is the CV drive and it's always fail. It's always fail from here. Because look at this, look at this when it's shaking. See the, see this one? See the whole movement inside where the bearing here? It's always faulty here. Even you put a new CV joint in, you be careful. You'll be stuck one day. So very careful with wobbling, wobbling. See, wobbling on the bearings, better replace it. The engine's still running, but you see a lot of oil everywhere. So that's why we said we have to do reconditioning for this engine all the socks i should have put the whole engine down with the cradles and i put down the whole lot with the engine but unfortunately i cannot do it because the um we don't have the hoist if we chuck it up and we put it down and we cannot lift this one up so we cannot pull the engine out so we have to do bits by bit so we have to pull the engine out separately and the cradles come out last i will train oil and gearbox oil before I pull the CV driver choice out because I don't want to make too much mess or too much oil here and my mom will kill me so better train them all out cut up the exhaust and then remove the CV joint now you can have plenty of room so now you can do whatever you want bottom engine mount will out and the rails out so what I do is try to hook them on and I try to check it up now and take up the two side mounts and we'll be free so set up the hoist Remember, using an elephant, an elephant, okay, an elephant chains, not the chicken chains. Okay, we try to find some very, very heavy duty spot here and bolt them on here, and we can put the somewhere very safety. Do not go wrong, and you may damage your your engine heads. Okay, do not go wrong. Put a bit of number 12 here. When we check up, we'll be right. When the bolt bent, that's it. And this side, same way. Same at the other side. So, what we do is uh, here we can change this over here. Go over here, wrap around there. We have a lot of, we have a lot of shackles, so we don't worry about it too much. A lot of shackles, okay. You can slip my chain coming here. No. Put this car on, the engine on for you easy. Take off this one. Trust me. And you can sneak the engine on. Otherwise, the engine just enough the width to go in the both of them. What I mean, if I put the engine down that way, and I cannot lift the car up, but uh, look like the side of the gearbox is wider than the body. So we move the chains up a little bit so we can tilt the engine this way. And we can lift up the end. Hopefully, we can do it. The time when you pull it out so hard, and later you have to think the way to put it back in. So, make easy for you is uh, when you install engine and everything, don't put the alternator and air compressor. You can finish this part, put this one in, and tensioner everything. Because this car is very hard to do tensioning on the back here. 
because there is no room at all in this gap here. Each one of the car that have a very ridiculous, uh, very ridiculous uh, bloody um, hand to go in here for this adjustment and uh, the belt. So very hard to replace this belt. Okay, I, I think if anyone wanted to replace this belt, think about it. Think twice. Very hard. Anyways, uh, we try to figure it out to get in and later. When we put the engine back on the new car, we're not gonna put this one on and all the data not put on. We just slide the slide that in and then we put all this one in later. So how that deal. So hopefully we can get this one this way out. If worst case scenario, we have to take up the air compressor. Finger cross if we can get them out by this way. If not, I'm crying man. It's just exactly the same length of the the width of the car. See? No room at all. Very little tiny place. Tilt that end a little bit more. You check it up. Tilt this one a little bit more by pushing down or by see? Pushing down and lift up down. If you got two people it would be easy. But by myself here, yeah? <coughs> tilt it down like that. Yep. Yep, see. So later later when you put in the car, you can slide this one in first and drop that one down later so now it look like it clear see so when i tilt that end down see and if this one go past see very little narrow roads you tilt that engine down that way and we'll be right yep we check it out when it passed that one and and then we push over that way okay we push it over that way by this and this one so take it easy and steady, enjoy. And um, this is my first time undo this engine anyway. So this one, all I do is just, thing, just lift it up. If I put my crowbar, it will be good, see? Pass this one, pass this one, okay. Now I can check it up more, a little bit more. And I pass this one. So yeah, the easy way is next time, don't put this one on. And uh, make sure we test the air compressor before we put on the car. So if the air compressor working, good. That's it. Now we check it up all the way and it should come up. See anything attached to the car? Okay. So if if I move this one one more here, the gearbox tilt up more, will be more better. But anyway, enough is enough. Enough is enough. And we check for some wire here. This one's speed sensor. And the speed sensor here and some of the wire here go in the vacuum line here is broken here so better we better put it back and see this one missing the flux they do very dodgy anyway you wouldn't care I don't care I don't care as long as uh, we get the engine and the parts this is the stolen car okay from the wreckers or uh, from the wreckers they get the cheap car far away and they put everything back in one piece and they sell it for good money even all this is shit see they don't do it properly all this got a hole that's why the noise so very very rough and they said the car were running rough because they just put them back together and maybe maybe this is different engine who know they just wax it on and they try to sell the car with one piece like this much easier to sell than they sell it separately because not many people buying this car this day that's why they're selling like this so and i could not find the uh, approval approval plate so that's why we know that's the uh, stolen car okay we pull it out Okay, we load down, so keep denture away. And then uh, the power steering line, we have to keep the whole lot. Later, take the photos. When you put in another car, exactly how it's run. So it can be run into the power steering presser house there. See, all this got a name writing on. It's all from the records. Even this engine from the records. All it do is just do is just wax the engine on. 
all the bolts and nuts are using different size do uh, take them all up get the water washer wash them all up before we uh, pull the engine out parts and rebuild the engine and uh, that's it keep everything original make sure marking them on writing on it and uh, get in the timing position before you remove all parts and uh, fix all the wire loom if you remember all that don't go wrong and uh, yeah gotta keep everything right and see see leaking air they don't do a good job there and later when you put on the car two on that side and then we can pull it out before now you do now a uh, just take some photos and uh, and then uh, before you strip everything out and on, on this side I don't know about the starter motors but if you want good get another starter motor reconditioning before you put on because this car is very pan on the chore to replace the on the chores or replace the uh, starter motor it's in right there the problem is uh, if you go underneath this car you cannot see anything you only can see undo this two bolt one bolt two bolt there and the starter motor will fall back that way very hard not easy at all to replace starter motor for this car look easy but not easy at all and uh, position up the see the car box the clutch here and I have to go inside take up the uh, the gear stick shifter so gotta be the same we spray the greaser on and then we're washing all the dirty out all the greasy out with the uh, water jets and uh, before we strip the engine make sure it's nice and clean so we don't have too much dust or dirty on your hand we leave for next day and uh, we will we will trip it out we order some parts and make sure we take it out and order the size of the bearings and the rings and all that just in case we buy wrong maybe sometime inside the engine have been rebuilt or different size up who knows okay guys thanks for watching simon 2 this is how simon pull out the engine sr20 of the nissan triple s nissan Pulsar q triple s 